I'm Sten Sorensen, CEO of uh, Sereno Scientific. It's a company formed uh, based in Gothenburg, but we work globally. And we're listed on NASDAQ, 10,000 shareholders, market cap, about one and a half billion. Uh, so we're passionate about uh, uh, driving the development and finding new drugs that can both enhance quality of life and also extend the life of patients with a high unmet need. And you see some uh, uh, characters here on the slide that uh, exemplifies what that can be. This is a lady, she is about 50 years old. Uh, she has a nice life, she has kids, uh, a husband, hopefully. And uh, suddenly she gets this diagnosis. She gets pulmonary fibrosis. She has seven years to live, I mean. And this is a progressive uh, development uh, of narrowing her pulmonary artery. So she eventually, the right heart will fail and she will die uh, for that reason. And currently the drugs are only dilating these vessels. What if you could halt the progression and maybe even reverse it? That's what we're about. Here's another example. Uh, this time a man, happy couple, suddenly he's diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis, uh, idi idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. This is even worse, and uh, this mostly affects men. You have three and a half years to live on average, and what if you could halt this progression and maybe reverse it? Um, current drugs are not really doing, uh, being that useful. There are only two drugs on the market. This is a third example. Uh, the most common killer on the planet is thrombosis, uh, resulting in, for instance, a stroke and myocardial infarction, uh, often killing the patients in that uh, uh, event. Uh, most drugs out there, or all drugs, I should say, cause uh, very dangerous bleedings. Three out of 100 dies of the medication. 25 out of 100 get some kind of bleed. You see them here. What if you could develop a drug that could prevent thrombosis without increasing the risk of bleeding. That's what we're trying to do. So Sereno Scientific's two major programs are utilizing epigenetic modulation uh, through HDAC inhibition. And we, uh, our vision is to untap that potential into cardiovascular and pulmonary diseases. And uh, there's a, a, an abundance of literature out there with proof of concept studies that have proven that, you, that these, this uh, mode of action can actually both prevent and reverse pathological remodeling. It's anti-fibrotic, anti-inflammatory. You can reduce systemic and pulmonary pressure, and you can also prevent thrombosis without increasing the bleeding risk. So if you have this possibility you'd love to address several diseases with this and help patients. We have two programs utilizing this potential. So here you see our portfolio. We actually have three programs, but two of them are HDAC inhibitors. The first one, CS1, we applied to pulmonary arterial hypertension. You remember the first lady. We are in phase two. We just announced uh, phase two A data, very positive data, and I'll get back to that later. So actually here, so the status is a few weeks back we uh, communicated positive data out of this trial that was pursued in the US in 10 centers together with Abbott. I'll relate the data later. But during this process of the trial, we were asked to apply for expanded access or um, uh, expanded access uh, to the patients by the investigators. They didn't want to let go of the drug to these patients in this rare de and deadly disease. So we applied and we got it approved by the FDA. So actually today there's one patient that had re already received compassionate use and that will provide the drug for a year or longer, uh, way before the drug hits the market. So we are now collecting the information from this trial, moving towards regulatory authorities to get approval for a phase 2b or phase 2b3 pivotal trial. If so, that will move us towards the market eventually. We will also, during the next year, uh, evaluate this long-term usage in the clinic 
under the extended access program and will do so both with a special technology that's implanted in the heart of these patients that can wirelessly translate information every day to the physician's computer and we also will evaluate the structural impact with a special technology that we just partnered with a company called Fluida where you can CT scan the, and, and uh, evaluate the, the changes in the pulmonary arteries uh, structure as you go. Uh, in 2026, we aim to start this phase 2 or phase 2B3 trial and move towards the market eventually. The second program is a novel HDAC inhibitor, CSO14. It's actually quite similar to the first one, but it's better. It has a better profile. We just re received patent on that in, in the UK this year. Uh, and so we patented on the 2025 on that compound. We are applying this HDAC inhibitor to another rare disease. The second one I showed up front idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And we hope and believe that that will also be a disease-modifying uh, approach and help these patients. We are currently in phase one. It's going very well. We aim to conclude that trial by the mid of next year and then move towards uh, approval of uh, this um, indication and the drug for a phase two trial that we aim to start in 2026, in the beginning of 26. The third program is a novel IP receptor agonist invented by uh, Professor Mike Hollenstedt at the University of Michigan. And we have required, uh, acquired uh, global rights for development and commercialization of this drug. It's based on an endogenic lipid, very specific, very potent for the IP receptor. And we have some very interesting data on this drug, preventing thrombosis without increasing bleed in translatable cremaster mice models. So we have high hopes for this drug. It's in the preclinic. We aim to move it into the clinic in 26. So back to the rare disease, pulmonary arterial hypertension, affecting most wi mostly women. So you have this, suddenly uh, the pulmonary artery, there's a pathological process that's initiated and the pulmonary artery, which you can see here, narrows very quickly. So the muscle in, in the artery narrows and there's also fibrosis component. So it becomes very difficult for the blood to flow to the lung from the right heart and the right heart eventually fails. With these characteristics to the right, we aim to help these patients to stop the progression and maybe reverse it. That has already been documented in preclinical trials in mice in this PH model, both prevention and reversal uh, of this process. And we have now brought this compound into the clinic. And during that trial, we actually last year got contacted by an investigator that had completed a couple of patients in the trial. And she said, I don't believe what I'm seeing. My patient has been remarkably improved while using your drug on top of standard of, of care. So this patient, 51-year-old lady, had three triple therapy for PH. And in our trial, she was included and she got our drug on top of that therapy, standard of care. She, we basically normalized her pulmonary pressure, her pulmonary vascular resistance, and we also moved her from functional class two, very symptomatic, back to functional class one, where you hardly feel the disease. So that was something that the investigator saw and wanted to communicate to us and actually write an abstract for American Heart. We did a review of mid of the trial, and we saw that two-thirds of the patient had reduced pulmonary pressure, as measured by this wireless technology from Abbott, where you could measure every day. Then at the end of last year, as I mentioned, we were approached by investigators that didn't want to let go of the drug. So we filed with FDA and got approval for expanded access program, which we are running now. So let's look at the phase two data that we saw, which 
uh, encourage us a lot. Uh, so we had 25 patients in the trial. It was primarily a safety and tolerance trial, and we went through that with flying colors, I would say, with the drug, so no serious issues and uh, no serious side effects. But what's important here, the physicians, they use a tool called risk, validated risk score where you can define what risk the patients have to get worse and even die. So 44% of the patients in this trial uh, reduced the risk score with one point on a scale of 10, 10 being the worst. So that reduction of one point means that that patient has a 23% lower risk of death within 12 months. So we improved the prognosis for these patients in 44% of the patients by adding our drug to standard care. The second thing a physician wants to do is they want to improve physical capacity. And that's normally defined by neocard classification, functional class. And what we saw in our trial that one third of the patients got improved functional class. They were actually moved from a severe functional class to a lighter functional class, highlighting that they had better physical capacity. So one third of the patients had and then third, what you'd like to do as a physician, you'd like to improve the hemodynamics. And we saw that in two-thirds of the patients, we reduced the pulmonary pressure as measured by this CardioMEMS technology from Abbott. So we actually obtained a reduced risk score, uh, improvement of functional class, and hemodynamic impact in the patients. I should say that in 25% of these patients, we had high super responders. Um, so we actually improved the pulmonary vascular resistance between 30 and 50%. Let's move on to CSO14 and IPF. We have shown a dose-dependent impact on pulmonary uh, lesions and also fibrosis uh, reduction. And so we have selected IPF as the target indication for a second HDAC inhibitor. So looking at our portfolio, we have a pH program for CS1 in phase two moving to 2B3. We have an IPF program that we're going to move to phase two uh, in 2026. We have an HDAC portfolio, you can say, and we have a thrombosis portfolio, two drugs that can prevent thrombosis without increasing bleeding. So we believe we are an interesting company to partner with, as we heard here. We just brought in 250 million in a structured loan convertible uh, notes of, uh, financing for the company that will take us through into 2026. And we have increased our focus on rare diseases. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stan. You've got Short a lot time. of uh, question. Yes, yeah. but we have a little time for your questions. So first up, is the financing a hint that Sereno value the company higher than the market, and therefore took a loan now rather than share issues with unnecessary dilution? Um, I, I rarely want to discuss the market, but uh, benchmarks for a lot of uh, rights issues have been 50% rebates. Uh, and um, we have strong belief in our programs, and we also had very interesting parties that wanted to extend a loan and convertible notes with some warrants. And that the dilution of that package is 4%. So we felt that that was really good structure for our shareholders and for us. And we are happy that uh, Fenya uh, Capital Partners and their partner in the US, Arena, wanted to do this deal with us. So. You mentioned Fluida earlier. Um, how will their technology help you understand your candidate's impact, and especially talking on a lung vascular remodeling? Yeah, well, in, in, in rat studies where we have documentation both for prevention and reversal uh, of this progression uh, in pulmonary arterial hypertension, uh, you can do biopsies and you can study. And with CSO14, we actually have seen, as I showed briefly, that we impact flexiform lesions development, the core of pH. So that's actually with our second HDAC inhibitor. 
Um, in man, you can't do really biopsies in, in this severe disease in the lung. So what you can do, you can partner with Fluida, who's formed by a former NASA engineer and his uh, professor father in, in, in lung diseases. And they have developed the CT scan methodology, uh, a technology that you can uh, look at 3D on the structures of the lung, both the lung tissue and the arteries. And we have partnered with them to look at the structure here uh, long-term impact of our drug. And we hope we'll see the impact of the drug as we have seen in the animal work. Yeah, we'll be interested to know. Thank you so much for your presentation. Sten Ersorensen. Thank you.